unnoticed by most of Africa and the rest of the world, a silent green revolution is steadily happening in Zambia. A new type of farming is taking off. It's called conservation agriculture, and it's bringing benefits to thousands of smallholder farmers. Their numbers are growing by the year. So what is conservation agriculture? It's based on three key principles or pillars, as Dr. Stephen Muliokela explains. The conservation agriculture is based on three principles or three pillars, a minimum soil disturbance. You do only the tillage system which requires for you to establish an effective plant and maintain an effective crop stand. Secondary, you introduce legumes where you rotate your crop, you know. And thirdly, you must leave some crop residue to be able to provide soil cover so the soil is not left bare. What benefits does conservation agriculture bring? Above all, it improves crop yields and incomes. And that explained its growing popularity among smallholders. Esther Mumba, a local farmer, appreciates it. What we are discovering is that we are better off today compared to those years before we started conservation agriculture. And Noah Piri, a farmer who was trained by the Zambian Conservation Farming Unit, tells how he has gained from the innovative practices. First year, when the, this uh, CFU comes in, uh, said, try this method. I said, well, I'm going to adopt this method, so I'm going to try it so that uh, I can see the difference. Yeah. So first year, I managed to harvest 250 bags. I said, ah, this is good. Here is how it works in Zambia. To start with, small precision basins are dug after harvest, and these are maintained each year. Alternatively, the land may be ripped using oxen. Because only soil in the basins or in the ripped lines is disturbed, and the spaces between are untouched, this maintains soil structure and keeps organic matter in the ground. Whereas conventional ploughing does the opposite, exposing the soil and degrading it over the years. After land preparation, lime and fertilizer are precision placed in these basins or in the ripped lines. Soil is backfilled. Farmers can prepare land during the dry season. This allows timely planting immediately after the rain comes. Crucial to achieve good yields. Throughout the year, land is covered with mulch, a blanket of crop residues. This holds the rainfall and protects the soil surface from eroding under heavy tropical rains. With time, the mulch decomposes into soil organic matter and builds up fertility. This is effectively recreating forest floor conditions on farmland. Each season, the crop is rotated to minimize pests and crop diseases and to keep the soil fertile. In Zambia, farmers rotate maize, followed by legumes such as soya bean or groundnuts and in the following season, a cash crop like cotton. Conservation agriculture makes the land healthier and is an excellent example of climate smart agriculture with its triple wins. Production is insured. The system is more climate resilient and more carbon is stored in the ground. But it's not just conservation agriculture itself that's so fascinating. It's the way it's spread throughout Zambia. Alec Daka of the Ministry of Agriculture picks up the story from the beginning. 
It uh, began from the 70s, where the government was subsidizing heavily on maize production. And because of monocropping, it's like the soils got depleted. And when we realized that the yields were getting lower and lower, um, the government ended up coming up with an issue of conservation agriculture. And that is where now they proclaimed that by the year 2015, we should have 600,000 farmers uh, practicing conservation agriculture. This target was outlined in the government's policy proclamation in 1999. It may have been ambitious, but already by early 2012, a quarter of a million small-scale farmers have adopted the system. Zambia is well on track to achieve its target of 600,000 farmers by 2015, half the total number. With conservation agriculture rapidly spreading worldwide, Africa is swiftly catching up and Zambia is leading the way. If farmers appreciate a practice and they can afford it, they'll pick it up quickly, often learning from one another. But the Zambian story doesn't end there. Researchers in the country are making conservation agriculture even better for farmers. Here at the Garch Research Station, indigenous Fiderbia albida trees are being integrated into the system. Fiderbia trees capture nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it through their root nodules. When their leaves are shed, they also enrich the soil. No wonder it's known locally as the fertilizer tree. And uniquely, it's in the growing season when the extraordinary Fiderbia trees drop their leaves, allowing gentle sunlight through to the crops. The tree's deep taproots reach for the water table and don't compete for moisture or nutrients in the topsoil. In the dry season, while most other types of trees shed their leaves, Fiderbia sprouts new foliage and its canopy shades the ground. Scientists can help improve the system further, but farmers make their decisions based on what they've already seen. Farmers like Esther Mumba. After our first trial with conservation agriculture, we could afford to buy four cattle. So I realized it was very profitable. We have managed to educate all our children up to grade 12. We eat well at home. Last year, we started building a house, which we will complete this year. That's a huge benefit. Compared to previously, our lifestyle has greatly improved. Smallholder farmers in Zambia are feeding the nation and at the same time keeping their land healthy and productive. And for Mrs. Mumba, like thousands of others, the choice is simple. It's conservation agriculture.